As I'm sure many of you know, free agency season is well underway in the NHL, and many teams have started to make some big moves for their team in this upcoming season. A lot of signings, a lot of big signings as well. One of the teams we're going to be talking about in this video is the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's a few things that they've done that have been kind of questionable, but, questionable, but you know, they made some pretty good moves as of late, and we're going to be talking about that in this video. So, you know, they didn't make many big, big moves yesterday, free agency day, July 1st. You can see here, they just kind of made some simple moves, like... John Klingberg, that's one of the big ones. That's one, a one-year, $4.15 million. Gotta like that deal. Max Lajoie, William Lagesson, and Ryan Reeves are the other three that they made for NHL contracts. You can see that one, Not those are not really the big ones that they need at this moment. Ryan Reeves, yes, that's a locker room guy that you want. It's a guy who's willing to fight back for people that will not fight back on your team. And that's, that's a good one compared to the others. But is that really enough for what they're going in to do next season? You know, the Leafs... They're almost there. They don't have much time left on their whole Stanley Cup era, we'll say. You never know how much time they'll have left at all with it. But those moves, do they really uh, make this team better and more of an NHL Stanley Cup-ready franchise? We're going to be talking about that in this video. But we got this tweet here from Pagnata, which is a pretty big one for the future of the Toronto Maple Leafs. As the Leafs continue to weigh in their options, the cap... I'm hearing they remain in the mix for Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi. Bertuzzi wants term. Domi could come at two years. But this tweet, uh, you know, not really relevant anymore. I guess it is, but not on the Bertuzzi side. As Tyler Bertuzzi just joined the Maple Leafs on a one-year 5.5 million AAV. He didn't get term he wanted, but he did get paid by the Toronto Maple Leafs. And what an addition this is. Nick, what do you think about Tyler Bertuzzi heading to the Toronto Maple Leafs for next season? I think Tyler Bertuzzi is a better version of Michael Bunting. So, I, I, I mean, that's... That's a perfect guy you want. That's like what yesterday with the Ryan Reeves thing. Like I, I was thinking, and I believe we were talking about this yesterday. Like that does really nothing for the Toronto Maple Leafs that Wayne Simmons didn't do, except for win fights. That's all it is. Is you win fights instead of coming in on like on you know draws or whatever. Like fights. Okay, if you win or lose a fight, it doesn't matter. You have a fight. You have a guy there to fight. Uh, for just for to take up for your players and a guy that actually has the confidence to go and drop the gloves. Uh, Ryan Reeves might be a little bit more of a locker room guy. I don't know. Uh, that didn't do much. We were saying they needed more uh, grit in the top six. Tyler Bertuzzi absolutely does that. Tyler Bertuzzi, you saw he played really well with Boston even in that playoff series. Like I know they lost and whatever, but Tyler Bertuzzi's always been that type of player, the gritty guy that can play in the top six, put up a few points. I love the fact that it's a one-year deal because – uh, with that AAV, I mean, he probably wasn't going to get that uh, with a few uh, a few years in term or whatever, but that AAV, Toronto can't afford to keep that around with uh, Nylander and Matthews extensions looming, especially considering Tavares, uh, uh, Ma uh, Marner as well. Like, you, you can't afford to give that guy term. So I, I, I really like uh, the Bertuzzi signing for one year. Yeah, as well. This is probably going to be the case if they do end up getting Domi, which they're in still conversations too, as well as being uh, signing Tyler Bertuzzi even after. This, I think, is another uh, another player they need to add. I don't think it's a they should add. It is a need because he, he Max Domi is a similar play style to Tyler Bertuzzi. You know, they both are physical. They both go into into the areas in the ice where not a lot of people want to go in the corners. They'll take a hit, give a hit. You know, that's the style of player Toronto needs. And if they can get Max Domi, who is probably going to be uh, on a short term contract regardless, and he will be less money than Tyler Bertuzzi. I think that's another must for the Toronto Maple Leafs, that they do need to sign him. And uh, there's, this could come today. We don't really know when, it, if at all, it will come. But this will be an opportunity today, after having the Tyler Bertuzzi signing now, to get, the, I think, one more major piece to add to this forward. So, Nick, what do you think about Domi as well adding to this forwards if they do end up getting him? I've got mixed opinions on Max Domi because as a former Montreal Canadian, he had a really, really good year his first year in Montreal at 70 points. And he was that player, like... He would fight people. He would hit people, like, as a small guy. Like, you know who his dad is. Everyone knows who his dad is. So, you know, he's going to fight people. He, he knows how to fight. Uh, Domi does have – I will say Toronto could use a player like that. I will. I also will say Domi does have some stupid tendencies, like, to get penalties when the game uh, – when the game is in, like, the, the prime of the game. Uh, Nick, H I remember Nick Haig was just making fun of him when he was taking a penalty uh, during the playoffs in that series against uh, Vegas, and he was just he kept on doing it and doing it and doing it, and he got a penalty for it. And uh, it, it, you can get under Max Domi's skin pretty easily, but he can also get under yours. So he's get he might have to watch himself, like if he's gonna because you know like. 
they, they'll be looking for a new bunting next year. The referees will probably. Uh, it's just the way it is. So he's going to have to watch his play style when he's in Toronto, but – he definitely has the talent to go out there and put up 50 points and uh, also get under the guy's skin a little bit. Yeah, Domi's kind of, his production over the last few years have came down. I think his discipline is as well. You know, his discipline's gotten a lot better what it seemed like in Dallas and Chicago for this last season. He looked pretty, he wasn't, I wouldn't say, uh, very retaliatory. You know, he'd, he'd get reta- uh, retaliation on you, but not in a cheap shot, nothing like that. Nothing that will draw or make him take a penalty on the pe- on the play. So I think this is something Toronto needs. You know, they don't got really anybody that will get under anybody's skin on the team other than being offensively talented. They have no physical guys. But now adding Ryan Reeves, Tyler Bertuzzi, if they do get Max Domi, I think that's a good trio to add for this type of situation that the Leafs are in and what they need to do. But you can see as well, like, here's the Klingberg deal, one year, 4.5, uh, 4.15, and the Ryan Reeves is a three-year, 1.35, and that is done now, but don't mind the win, it's done. But the Ryan Reeves, he wanted uh, to not go, you know, he's at the end of his career now. He said when he was looking to get an extension with Minnesota that he didn't want to move around anymore. So the three years, that gets him set. That gets him nice. You know, he's there for the rest of his career. I, I You have to assume. I can't really see him going anywhere else. But the players that they got, is it really enough to say what they had was going to be better than what they got rid of, you know? Toronto Maple Leafs, they chose Sheldon Keefe over Ryan O'Reilly. You know, that's a tough pill to swallow. This tweet here says, you know, Ryan O'Reilly was not happy last season with the coaching in the playoffs. They didn't make changes when they needed to, and that's that's the reason he didn't come back. You know, he was in talks with them all all, all throughout the uh, the process of getting extended, but when Sheldon Keefe uh, was confirmed that he's staying, I guess Ryan O'Reilly kind of chose to jump ship. You can't really blame him when the coaching staff is not making the moves they need to, you know. But, Nick, what do you think about the additions they've made so far in uh, Reeves, Klingberg, Bertuzzi? Do you think that replaces the players like Luke Shen, Michael Bunting, Ryan O'Reilly that they lost this uh, this free agency? I think John Klingberg uh, over Luke Shen is like, he's obviously a better point producer and he might be a little bit a little bit quicker than Luke Shen. Uh, he doesn't bring the same element that Luke Shen did with the toughness and all that. Uh, he probably still will play on the top line with Morgan Riley as Luke Shen did uh, last going off. Uh, as for Ryan O'Reilly, I definitely would have liked to keep Ryan O'Reilly if I was a Leafs fan. Uh, I, I also would have liked to see him stay. That That's a guy they could have used in the, in the third line center. I don't know if they would have got Bunting if they had to uh, get Ryan O'Reilly back. Or not Bunting, sorry. Um, Bertuzzi, but uh, I, I don't know. With Ryan O'Reilly, it just seemed like it seems something's off there. Like with Sheldon Keefe, obviously people were saying he wasn't happy with the uh, the coaching and all that stuff. Um, I don't know. Ryan O'Reilly seems to me like he he'll he'll have a voice in the locker room, and like maybe maybe he wasn't being listened to. Maybe Sheldon Keefe didn't like him or just didn't like what he was saying and went against what he was saying and didn't decide to change anything. And that can be really frustrating for a player. So I can definitely see why Ryan O'Reilly didn't come back uh, if that's the case. Uh, as for what they got and if it's better than what they had, I think Bertuzzi, in a sense, is a lot better than Michael Bunting. Uh, plays a little bit more of a disciplined game probably than Michael Bunting did last going off. Uh, I don't know how they're going to replace Ryan O'Reilly because that was a really big part. He was a really big part of uh, getting out of the first round there last year, uh, played an integral role in that team uh, defensively with the face-offs, and he also scored a goal to tie it late against Tampa Bay, and who knows what could have happened if that didn't go in. So, I, I mean, I, I definitely would have liked to see him get another center like Ryan O'Reilly or at least retain Ryan O'Reilly, but uh, I, I'm going to say they got a little bit worse. Yeah, I'm going to say the same. You know, it's too early to tell yet for sure that you haven't seen them on ice. On paper, I will say I agree with you. It's a bit worse, you know. As well as on the goalie situation, wasn't a uh, a big pool of goalies in this year's free agency, so you can't really blame them from going out and getting someone that, you know, isn't, I would say, much better than Ilya Samsonov because he's played good. He was good last season, very injury-plagued, but that's one thing they're going to have to be aware of, you know. But not much you can do on the free agency front of that, uh, the goaltending for this one. But we'll see what happens in the coming days with Max Domi and if the Leafs make any more additions in the free agency by uh, by signings or by trades. You know, anything can happen and I expect some more moves for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But that's all we have for this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a like and also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more free agency content, off-season content and everything like that. We'll be having it here all throughout the summer. So if you want to see it, make sure to subscribe. If you liked the video, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, have a good day.